Hi, I'm David Hoffman, the principal at Island Park Elementary School. And thank you for watching this short video uh, that will describe the intricacies and implications of our hybrid learning model for grades two through five. My colleagues and I will be sharing different aspects of the model. And I'm gonna start by actually showing you the hybrid schedule and quickly going through what that schedule means for your child. The hybrid model was created with our kindergarten and first grade schedules in mind to um, make sure that our families um, who have multiple students in different grades um, have a similar schedule so that we lessen the impact each day. So our kindergarten and first graders will continue to attend schools at the times that they are attending now if you have a student in kindergarten and first. For your students in grades two through five, they will also arrive at school around nine o'clock each day, whether they're taking the bus, whether they're being dropped off, or whether they are walkers. The doors to classrooms will open at approximately 9.15, where there will be a quick hand washing or hand sanitizing. And then they will start their first instructional block at around 9.15. Now, those instructional blocks will vary um, by teacher and by grade. There are two instructional blocks in the morning and an opportunity for a snack and recess. In this particular model that you're looking at, these are the um, suggested recesses, but these may not be the final time slots for our grades two through five recesses. There'll be a five minute snack and a 15 minute recess before the second instructional block. Again, each grade will determine what will be um, conducted during that instructional block. At approximately 1225, the students will start packing up to go home. There will be a lunch opportunity where you will be able to order a lunch that will be delivered to the classrooms and the students will bring that bag lunch home with them if they indeed did order a lunch. More information about lunches will be forthcoming when you will receive a more detailed explanation of some of the protocols and procedures of our hybrid model. That'll be arriving in an email um, around a week before your student arrives back to school. At 12.30, the students take transportation home. They either walk home, they get picked up, or they take the bus. And then there is a short, what we call recess lunch period at home from the time they arrive back till about 1.20. At 1.20 is the final remote learning block for all students. And that will again vary, the model will vary according to the grade or the teacher, but most likely it'll either be a small group session or it'll be a whole group um, session again with the entire class. Now going back to um, the beginning of the day, remember that this is an A, B schedule, more will be um, shared with you shortly, but on the day that your student is at home, they will have the same schedule, they will just be learning from home. From two o'clock until um, 3.45, our schedule remains the exact same as it is now. There'll be opportunities for students to work with paras, um, conferring time, and then it's teacher planning time. And of course, our asynchronous PE and music opportunities will still remain if you choose to engage in them. So that's just the general hybrid model. Again, kindergarten, first grade, and grades two, through five, attend school from approximately 9.15 until 12.30, at which time they all go home, um, have lunch, get some fresh air, and prepare for the afternoon um, flexible learning block. And now I'm going to um, hand over the camera to um, Amy Batliner-Gillette, who will talk to you more about A-B days. Hi, um, I'm Amy batliner Gillette. I'm the principal at Northwood, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the hybrid model. First, as a reminder, the reason for the hybrid model is that our classrooms in grades two through five are too large. There are too many students in those classrooms to meet the social distancing requirements from our public health recommendations. So the reason that we have this hybrid is that we have this need to split our classrooms so that we can host those kids in person while still following all of those health and safety protocols. What I've projected on the screen 
is our hybrid model so that you can start to wrap your head around what that might mean for your child. Students will be divided into group A and group B, and that grouping will remain consistent throughout the rest of the school year. Students who are in group A, as you can see on the top line there, will engage in in-person learning on campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that will be consistent. And group B students will be at home on those days. On Wednesdays and Fridays, our group B students will come for in-person learning on campus while group A um, does the Zoom streaming from home and learns from home. On Monday, that's our alternating day. So on Mondays, you'll we'll be providing you with a calendar and a schedule so that you'll see whether that is a group A in-person day or a group B in-person day, and those will alternate week over week. This means that on any given week, your student will, be, um, will have the opportunity to be at school in person for learning two or three days during each of those weeks, and then it will just flip flop. Um, we used a variety of, of reasoning to try and get to this um, and, and help it be predictable for families. Our goal is to make sure that um, we have siblings on the same schedule to support families across their learning. And our goal is to get your target or our, your assignment of your AB groupings for your children to you um, with a target date of February 2nd, um, so that the second and third graders who are starting on the 8th will have that information in time. When we think about this hybrid model, that does mean that some students are learning at home while some students are learning in the classroom. And that requires a different set of strategies and frameworks for our teachers to employ to engage both of those sets of learners. So um, teachers have been learning about those different frameworks and strategies. Um, our instructional coaches and our learning services department have been um, researching and sourcing different structures and strategies and our teachers are engaging in professional learning. Just like when we first started our remote learning, we are all once again learners in this. This is not something that has been a typical model of education ever before. And so um, we hope that you will partner with us as we all learn how to uh, engage all of our students and help them to move their learning forward in this new model. I'm going to hand off now to to my colleague, Heidi Christensen. Oops, I'm, I was muted. Thank you, Amy. Hi, everybody. I'm Heidi Christensen, principal at Lake Ridge Elementary, and I'm going to go very briefly and quickly over the a top 10 list of our layers of health and safety measures that we are taking and enforcing um, every day here in our schools to make it safe for your students and our staff to return to in-person learning. So first and most obvious is we're masking up every single day, all day, and everyone in the building, even um, maintenance people that perhaps come in the building, they are also being required to mask up. Um, except, of course, when eating or drinking, and one of my colleagues is going to talk to you a little bit more about snack time in just a few minutes. Um, we are limiting the eating and drinking at school. We're eating snack outside, sending students home before lunch. Number three on this top 10 list is, of course, the physical distancing. Um, six feet, we're maintaining six feet as often as we can throughout the day in the physical space of the classrooms. Every student has an individual student desk. They will all be facing forward all the time and be spaced at six feet apart. Um, like I think Amy mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, that, that's what's limited our numbers of students that we can have and hence forcing the AB schedule for our second through fifth grade, but we are, we are maintaining that. Um, and we are maintaining that six foot of distancing. We have markers all throughout our schools to help students um, uh, manage themselves when they're lining up or walking in lines and so forth. Anytime during the student day when we can't maintain that six foot bubble, if you will, it'll just be in passing and we will be limiting the duration of that to under 15 minutes. So for example, if a teacher needs to do some one-on-one -on -one work um, with a student, of course, there will still be masks on both sides. We have plexiglass between them and it will be under 15 minutes. Um, we're keeping the student classes cohorted. So they will be sef safely separated throughout the day. They won't be mixing um, classrooms, even at recess. Um, they won't be going out for any special services. The special services will come to them so that we 
are limiting um, the cross mixing of groups. Um, we're also kind of cohorting their student learning materials. So every student will have their own set of learning materials that will not be shared. So just things like pencils, crayons, workbooks, textbooks, um, reading books, scissors, all of that will be cohorted <laughs> um, to a, an individual student. Um, number six on this list, we have extra time built into our schedules for really significantly enhanced hand washing and sanitizing. So we will be monitoring the hand washing 20 seconds, every student washing in and washing out, especially when we're going to snack or if the kids leave the classroom, we'll also be upping our hand sanitizer use and it'll be available throughout the building. Um, you're gonna hear from us a lot about health attestations. That's another uh, safety layer that we will ask you to do every, every single morning, pass or fail. So please do that every day before your child arrives at school. Um, and a, another one of my colleagues is gonna talk again about that in more detail, but please fill that out honestly and early by 8 a.m. would really help our office staff out if you could get those done by 8 a.m. every day. Um, our nurse, nurses' offices, our nurses, our health rooms have been set up and for an isolation space. If a kid was to develop a cough or, or a sneeze at school, we have safe spaces for them to come and be taken care of and assessed by our nurses. Um, and our nurses are also training our staff to be really vigilant in noticing those symptoms and sending them to, sending them to the nurse's office if they see a child. Um, getting sick at school, because that does happen sometimes. Um, number nine, our school ventilation systems are wide open. We've maximized the ventilation. We've changed filters. So please send your children with layers, even those kids that wear shorts every single day of the year. If you could send them with a hoodie or a sweatshirt or something with layers, because they will be spending a lot more time outside and our buildings are a little chilly here and there. Um, and last, our custodial staff has really is taking extra steps every single day before school, during school, and after school. So additional cleaning, we have our, um, our electrostatic disinfectant sprayers that are going through every space every evening. And we're, we're using our Oxfair cleaning, our, um, I believe it's a, a medical grade or a hospital grade disinfectant cleaning throughout the day to keep our spaces safe for your kids. So that concludes my top 10 and I'll hand it off to my colleague, Jill Kelly. Thank you, Heidi. Good morning, I'm Jill Kelly. I'm the associate principal at both Lake Ridge and at West Mercer. And I wanna to speak to you more about the health attestations. This is perhaps the most essential piece that is easy to forget. And we really wanna implore that you really make it a top priority every morning. You will be receiving um, an email from Andreves Ronser. He is in our district and he's gonna be sending out very detailed information about how to access your health attestation on Skyward. It's very easy. As a matter of fact, you can get the uh, high, the excuse me the Skyward app, and it's very user friendly. I use it myself every day for my own app testation. Um, it is easy to go in and you, as we said daily and as Heidi said by eight o'clock is really preferred. We really start checking our health attestations well before the students arrive so we can really know um, who's ready and, and healthy for school. Uh, you can also set up um, a, te a, a text, a daily text message uh, to be able to remind you to do that. So there's multiple ways that you can get those reminders to get um, an email reminder, a text reminder so that you don't forget to do it. Without the attestation, students cannot stay at school. So it's really essential that that attestation is done and it's done honestly and with a temperature check. Every morning, you need to be checking your child's temperature to make sure that it's in the healthy range and that you can answer the questions on the attestation honestly and quickly, as we keep mentioning. Gone are the days where giving a child Tylenol to hold off a symptom and just send them to school. Those days are no longer with us, unfortunately. We're taking our health attestations very seriously, and we don't want to put you at risk 
your child at risk, each other at risk. So it's really essential that those health attestations are done um, routinely every day with honesty, with all the precautions. Um, we want to keep everyone safe. So um, if you have any health attestation questions, you're of course welcome to email um, us, email the nurse at your school. They are a great resource for any questions that you have. Um, I think without further ado, I think I've <laughs> hit health attestations to a healthy level. And I'm going to go ahead and pass this off to my colleague, Carol Best. Hello, everyone. I'm Carol Best. I'm the principal at West Mercer, and I get the pleasure of talking about many of our students' favorite subject, snack and recess. So every child will have the opportunity for snack and an outdoor recess. The plan is for snack to be outdoors under cover, and it will be important that you send a, a healthy snack that your child can open on their own. We are trying to minimize um, cross-contamination and so students need to be able to open that on their own. We also then have an outdoor recess and yes, we are doing outdoor recesses um, regardless of the weather pretty much. So um, I've been saying to my community that we're trying to embrace the Scandinavian philosophy of Fruitsliva. If you speak Scandinavian, I'm sure I didn't say that correctly, but the idea is daily outdoor exercise regardless of the weather. So it, our kindergartners and our first graders have done a beautiful job with this, um, playing in the rain with their, um, their appropriate outerwear so they don't get cold and wet and they're having fun regardless. We also are making sure that we are cohorting students during recess. So students during snack and during recess will stay in their class co co cohort. And when they play at recess, the materials that they play with will also be cohorted and cleaned between uses. So we're doing our utmost to keep your students safe and healthy. And with that, I will pass on to my colleague, Megan Isaacson. All right, everybody, you made it this far. Congratulations on watching it to this point in the video. I'm gonna wrap us up talking about transportation. Um, really primarily bus transportation. It's an eco, great, friendly way to make it to school each day. And uh, we have a lot of great systems set up to make sure that those uh, rides are safe and healthy, starting with taking the attestation prior to getting on the bus. Um, that's 100% important, the bus drivers are checking um, those attestations and making sure that every student has completed those and, and passed them before getting onto the bus. So those th that needs to happen, number one. Um, we also have a mitigation on the other end once arriving to school to kind of double check if there's anything that we're missing there. So safe ride to school, eco-friendly. Um, there's information on the website with a cute little bus icon if you wanna find out more about your student's transportation route and options, please check there. If you are driving or walking, same thing goes. It's really about completing that attestation on the front side early on so that our staff checking in with families can say hello, check you in and, and move on to getting our learning started. So thank you so much for watching this. Um, have a wonderful day and we can't wait to see your students back in our schools.